Good evening. Good evening. Pleasure to be here in a city. I live in the suburbs now. Something happens when you move to the suburbs. You build a deck. Because you have to if you want to stand behind your house. It gives your neighbors context. If you're on a deck, they go, oh, he's partying. If you just stand there on the dirt, they're like, oh, I think he's confused. <laughs> and here's what I've learned about building a deck. You can't build a deck based on a deck you stood on one time at a party. <laughs> That's not enough. You didn't absorb enough information. But nobody knows that until they're halfway through. This is the average man planning his deck. Got it. You don't got it. You don't. Did you measure it? No. How long is it? 15? 75 feet? Sure, like, I'll figure it out. And then you build it because they'll let you. Nobody stops you. Go to a hardware store, they let you. You're allowed to go. You don't have to show any identification. You don't have to prove an occupation. They will let you. They don't even want contractors anymore. If you go to a big one, go to a big box, the blue one or the orange one, a big hardware store, there are six parking spots for contractors. The lot holds 200 cars, six parking spots say contractor parking. Eight spots are for pregnant women. <laughs> 10 spots are handicap at a hardware store. And the rest of the parking spots are all eventually handicapped. <laughs> because you're not a contractor, you're gonna hurt yourself. <laughs> they don't even make you open the door. That's how little you have to prove your upper body strength before you go in. The door opens for you. There's a sensor, you walk up, whew, <laughs> come on in. You're a contractor now. <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah, I thought so. No, get rid of that. How about a guy that shakes your hand before you're allowed in a hardware store? He shakes it, just to feel the texture. <laughs> and if it's as soft as mine, he will turn you around, he'll pat you on the butt, he'll send you back out into the street. Sorry, big guy. <laughs> I'm not gonna sell you a saw, because you might cut your hand on the receipt. <laughs> Those are the hands you brought with you today, okay? I think you're looking for Michaels. You might be looking for a craft store. Let a man build something and you can decorate it with burlap ribbon. That's your job. <laughs> that can be your job. That's my level. So I'm gonna try to build this deck and then I'm gonna build a shed. And then my girlfriend was like, I was just on Pinterest. We should get some antique doors. You could build a shed out of antique doors. This is a thing now, turning old doors into other crap. Taking this kind of garbage, let's make it that kind of garbage. <laughs> Want a headboard? Let's get an old door. They sell headboards. <laughs> you could turn an old door into anything. I couldn't install a door as a door. <laughs> That's my building skill. If you gave me a door and a doorway and came back an hour later, I would be crying in a doorway. Don't give me this crap, I can't turn it into anything. Junk is like, oh, it's a currency. People go nuts for junk in the suburbs. That love for junk is what is keeping the garage sale industry <laughs> alive and booming. And we had one because we'd accumulated too much stuff. These people are nuts. If you try, you have to start early. If you try to have a garage sale on Saturday at 7 a.m., the first person will arrive promptly at 6 a.m. <laughs> and they will knock on your door if you're not outside to tell you you're having a garage sale. There, there's an urgency in them that they can't fight. They are there. I have to get there. I don't know this guy. He's not a store, but I have to get there to get the good stuff. And I'm like, that's fine. You want to see some good stuff? Come inside. Have a look around. That's the living room. That's the kitchen. This is all good stuff, and we're keeping it. It's still good. Do you want a VHS player with no door on it? If you consider that good, I got what you're looking for. Otherwise, 
It's not great, okay? And don't treat me like a store. Don't ask questions I don't have answers for. People will ask you like, oh, excuse me, this. Yeah, do you have any more like this? I'll check the stock room, <laughs> but I think that's it. Why would I hold out on you? <laughs> Have you ever had anybody try to return something to your garage sale? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, this blender, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's the only reason I sold it to you. A dollar doesn't get you a blender. A dollar gets you a shot at a blender. <laughs> and you didn't, you didn't win this time. You didn't, this scratch ticket was a dud, big guy. <laughs> I have these unrealistic expectations. I went to all this trouble to put the little price tag stickers on it. Why don't we all just start paying that number? <laughs> they won't. They're always, they want it for, doesn't matter what you say it is, they say it's less. They're always like, <sighs> they give you that like, oh no, you're gonna walk away. I would love for you to leave right now. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm feeling that exact same way right now. <laughs> What's the best you could do? Well, the best I could do is to be in a financial situation where I don't have to have a garage sale. That would be amazing for me. But what do you mean, price? I can't give you a deal at eight. It's early, I'm up, my time needs to be compensated. These people who just play these games with you, they tell you what your stuff is worth. How, how do you know what a snow globe from Orlando is worth? They know though, they have a, a book in their head. They know like, yeah, this snow globe is not worth 75 cents. It's worth a quarter. You're like, oh yeah? Well, watch this. I took the snow globe, smashed it on the driveway, said the look on your face worth more than the snow globe. <laughs> that was a pretty good time. I enjoyed that part. I gotta go. My name is Cramchin, and thank you so much.